Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Modern Day Debate. Uh, it's 2024, January uh, 4th. We've made it to 2024, and we're excited for another year of juicy debates. Uh, so we are going to uh, tag in the side chat. If you're interested in having these types of debates, if you're interested in making a case for Flat Earth, the Globe Earth, you should email the address I'm going to pin in the chat. It's Modern Day Debate at gmail.com. We're currently looking for new debaters taking those positions, or you can contact the same email address, moderndaydebate at gmail.com. It's going to be pinned in the chat in a moment if you're interested in debating creation or evolution topics. So without further ado, we're going to move into our topic for tonight, which is, was the moon landing a hoax? Get us started out here. We have Austin, Neat Pride. Thank you for being here, and the floor is all yours. Okay, so uh, I don't think a lot of uh, moon landing disbeliever, moon landing skeptics, think that the entire thing is fake and NASA just it's just a money sink. No, I think they actually do develop technology and stuff. Uh, I do think astronauts left Earth; they went in low Earth orbit. Uh, now let me share my screen real quick. the unlike that claim of landing on the moon and getting back we know that other countries have landed on the moon um we know that nasa can still put things on the moon not not humans unmanned crafts now obviously the burden of proof is on the person making the positive claim and this is probably the most extraordinary claim that anyone's ever made can you men on the moon who does that no one so except for NASA, like 50 years ago. But now NASA is trying to go back. In fact, they've been trying to go back since about 2004, or that's when the deadline was set. So in 2004, Bush said, we're going back in 2020. Well, then, oh, can I move this? Fuck. Yeah, so then Obama scrapped it. Okay, fine. I guess it was too expensive. Or wait, was it too expensive? Because if you adjust for inflation, it really hasn't changed that much. And this is in 2020 dollars. Uh, I mean, we can dig into the data source if you really want. It seems legit to me. But yeah, it's almost the same as it was in 1963. And on top of that, they already had all the te technology. Like there was no uh, research necessary at this point. It was, it's it's only development. I mean, if the goal is just to get back to the moon. So yeah, Trump must have realized that. And then he's like, we have to go back. He's going to make America great again, right? But then, uh, oh yeah. And then this is NASA on the NASA website. This isn't even like an old link. Like this is from, I got this today. And they still say, we are going to land astronauts in the lunar South Pole by 2024. That's that's what NASA is saying now. And on top of that, it's going to be a woman and a black person, a black male, to be specific. Great. I'm, I'm all for, for doing that. Okay. Well, wait, what's this? An international astronaut on the moon by end of 2020s. Well, that's not next year why are they why are they saying that okay it's an international astronaut oh no no okay so this is the new plan they, they so they pushed it back again and they're now they're saying they're going to send uh three or four astronauts around late 2024 or 2025 so they keep on you know pushing the buck like first it's 2020 then it's 2024 then it's 2025 and It'll probably just be whenever. Whenever they figure it out. They'll, they'll, they'll get there when they get there. Um, so what would I need to 
uh, be convinced. Well, I mean, if they could, if they could actually accomplish this, then yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. Uh, they'd have to do that. And then also for me to believe that they did it 50 years ago, they'd have to get a picture of, uh, you know, some of the stuff they, they left there, like the famous flag or the lunar rovers. Um, now, what will not be sufficient evidence for me is the retro reflector claim. Um, a lot of moon landing believers, they always say, oh, they're retro reflectors. That's uh, like incontrovertible proof. But it's not really uh, that we put men on the moon. It's just proof that we put stuff on the moon, unmanned crafts. Because, yeah, NASA, yeah, sure, they got some retro reflectors out there. But so did the Soviet Union. And uh, I guess more recently, so did India. And people always say, oh, they're, they're great pictures, great pictures. You have the best pictures. And when you, when you like search this, like third party evidence, they do some really deceptive stuff. Oh, shit. Okay, well, I'll just go at the end then. So probably the most suspicious thing is they've been told, just like the JFK files, they've been told to declassify them. You notice this is on a Wayback Machine, an internet archive link. It's because they still haven't, they deleted the site because people kept on like linking to it too much. Anyway, it says there are millions left. They're still, out of the 8 million, 5 million have been uh, declassified. So another way they could prove their claim is they could declassify all of them. And yeah, that's uh, that's it. All right, we'll end the screen share there, if you don't mind. Good intro. And we will... Yes, thank you so much for uh, your introductory statement there, Austin. Uh, we're going to move over to uh, Dr. Raza. You have six minutes on the floor, and it's all yours. All right, thanks for having me. And... Let me say first, actually, I'm not really here to debate. I'm mostly here just to tell my story. And <clears throat> I am an insider, a whistleblower here. And I, for many years, I was a moon landing skeptic. I was skeptical whether they landed or not. But once I actually gained inside information, then I'm no longer skeptical. I know for a fact it was fake. And I'm actually working with people who are designing the new type of radiation shielding needed now in order to really send men to the moon. So I think I would like to begin with what it is that I'm revealing here and then later talk about who I am and how I came to know this. Okay, so what I'm revealing here is that NASA has an agreement with the Chinese Space Agency where the Chinese Space Agency agreed not to blow the whistle on the Apollo missions in exchange for technological support. NASA is giving China technological support and I'm actually working with them. This is how I came to know it. Now the second part of the thing that I'm revealing here is that NASA actually has plans to admit they faked this thing. Now, this, the plan is, the original plan was we will admit Apollo never happened after Artemis III successfully lands men on the moon this time. Then we'll admit that was the first time. Now, that, that date is being pushed back to 2006. For me, it doesn't matter. So, so now they might have to admit it early because what's happening as you know in 2024 they're hoping to launch the artemis 2 and i can guarantee you those astronauts if they do actually send those astronauts around the moon in 2024 they will be coming back with cancer okay so nasa might actually have to admit early Okay, we okay. Our Artemis two didn't go so well. The astronauts came back with cancer, and we lied about the Apollo missions because there is no way to protect human beings from the deadly radiation of space. 
that's my job. I actually work in the designing of space radiation materials. Okay, so that is basically what I'm revealing. Um, who am I? I'm just, a, you know, I'm an American. I, grew, I went to university. I was an astrophysics major in Portland State University. And I was actually offered a job at NASA way back in 1999. But I turned them down and I left the country. And <clears throat> recently I, I'm working as a quantum physicist now in China. And I have been writing, studying the Artemis mission and the materials they're building the Artemis ships out of. What are their plans for protecting the astronauts for radiation for real? And I've been translating those articles into Chinese. So I know a lot about space radiation materials and what are our plans to actually send astronauts to the moon for real this time. There. All right. Well, thank you so much there, Dr. Raza, for your introductory statement. Uh, we're going to move it over to the other side, and uh, maybe we should have established this. Who would like to go first? I can go first if you want. All right. Mark, the floor is yours. All right. Give me one sec. I'll just share my screen. Thank you. Just tell me when I'm up and running. We are off to the races. There you go. Uh, okay, I just want to say thank you to Modern Day Debate, moderator Ryan, uh, T-Jump, my partner, my opponents, and of course you for, for watching. Um, so we're doing, is the moon landing a hoax? I think the real question isn't, was the moon landing a hoax? Uh, is basically, the main thing to understand is there wasn't one moon landing, it was multiple moon landings, and we didn't come there from nowhere. It wasn't just like we set out and then landed on the moon. Before the Apollo missions, there were the Pioneer missions that were originally designed to orbit the moon. Um, there was also the Ranger missions, which were designed to impact the moon, but not lift off or be recovered. Um, these missions were followed by the Surveyor missions that formed controlled landings on the moon, but didn't lift back off. In fact, uh, the Apollo 12 crew visited the landing site um, for Surveyor 3 and removed parts to return to Earth. The first Apollo missions did not actually land on the moon, but rather tested our capacity for doing so. For instance, Apollo 8 orbited the moon 10 times and returned, while Apollo 10 descended to their lander within 14 kilometers or nine miles to the surface without actually landing. Um, Apollo 1 was a disaster that never left the landing pad. A, a fire broke out and killed all occupants. Um, they were Gus Grissom, Howard H. White and Roger B. Chaffee. Uh, this was a complete disaster for NASA and led to Senate hearings and inquiries as to how it happened. The only reason the program still went ahead was support from the President, Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, there was almost also dramatic problems with Apollo 13 mission, whose crew nearly died when an oxygen tank exploded on the side of their craft. Um, these mistakes and, and failures are a reality of space exploration. However, they're terribly bad for NASA, which tries to avoid these incidents at all costs. They're just two of the disasters associated with the Apollo missions. Um, and I guess my question would be, why fake disasters? Why why sort of um, make make these things happen um, just to, you know, uh, um, and, and how did they they fake the deaths of three, three men who are very public figures? Um, uh, this sort of um, goes out to all of the uh, the people who are religious, who sort of claim a, a religious reason, um, basically um, for believing that the Earth is flat or we didn't reach the moon. Um, the Apollo 9 crew, Bill Anders, Jim Lovell and Frank Borman, read Genesis 1 on December 24th, 1968. Uh, no matter how deeply your religious conviction, it cannot stand up against the facts and the reality of the situation when you actually travel there. I'll just skip that. Retroflectors. This was mentioned, but as of this year, there's actually five retroflectors on the moon. Uh, the ranger laser ranging experiments have been done. If you know the precise coordinates to shooting lasers onto. Uh, the box reflectors are ingenious. They'll always reflect the light back to the origin, uh, no matter what angle it comes in. Um, interestingly, the laser reflection is becoming less strong as dust is beginning to cover the reflector. They still work well, but independent organizations have noticed the change. Um, many countries have sent automated rovers to the moon. Russia first off in the 70s. There's been modern rovers, U2, um, Pragnum from India. 
Uh, they're way more practical send than manned missions, but we, we certainly can reach the moon. That's not under debate, apparently. Um, more countries than you think have uh, uh, impacted or reached the moon successfully. Um, none of them have reported any kind of radiation or anything that would stop them from reaching the moon. Um, there's there's nothing that would would show that that we can't cannot do, have the capacity to reach here. Um, the future of moon landing. Mexico will be doing uh, microbots. Multiple private corporations are are reaching the moon. Um, we basically have um, you know everything from SpaceX to um, Dogecoin for some reason reaching the moon. Um, and uh, manned missions are planning to go back to the moon. But apparently that's not under debate. So, um, yeah, thank you. I'll call it there. All right, excellent. Well, we'll stop the screen share there, and we yeah. will hand the floor over to T-Jump. Thank you so much for your introductory statement uh, there, Mark. And the floor is all yours, T-Jump. Yeah, so the retro reflectors on Hadwick, they prove that we were there by manned. You can tell, you can look at the objects and what they're made of. They have no um, digitally moving parts. There's no way to set them up from a radio signal, which is what you would need from a rover-based platform. You need to be able to place it and then manipulate it to make it arrange in the correct orientation. There is none of that. It's mechanical. It means you had to move by hand. So that proves it was done by man. All of the predictions made by NASA were confirmed. We have all the pieces there. The Russians can take pictures of them. Everyone can verify these. These do reflect light in the same direction that it was shot at it, which is not a naturally occurring phenomenon. It was proved it was man-made. There is no controversy here and everything the guy said about China is wrong. There, I mean, NASA supplies information to most countries who are in the space program. They don't have a secret um, cabal trying to hide the organization. There is no plan to reveal it. That doesn't exist. I know many NASA people who work at NASA. My cousin actually works with Lockheed, who works with NASA. Absolutely nothing he said was real. It's completely fake. I think he may be delusional. Um <laughs> Other than that, there's that's all we really need. Yeah, there are boxes up there which are mechanically moving. They are not digitally moving and definitely must have been done by a human hand to have gotten it to be there because none of the parts can move automatically. All right, short and sweet. We're going to kick it into an open discussion. Uh, just a little quick housekeeping, everybody. I did put the modern day debate uh, Gmail in the chat. So if you want to participate in these debates, uh, you can contact us there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we're going to put it into our open discussion, so we hope everybody feels welcome at Modern Day Debate. Uh, we'll put it over to you, Dr. Uh, Rasa, to kick us off. Oh, thank you. I, I, I wanted to reply to one of the things he just mentioned. Do you mind if I do a share screen? Just real quick. You can go uh, I, I, he, he mentioned that that um, nobody had none no country has um, done any radiation measurements which say that it's not safe up there. Okay, um, here we go. This is the Chinese radiation measurement dose on the lunar surface. okay now and, and I'm part of the team who helped design this um, radiation sensing equipment. So um, I just want to say that his statement that nobody has, <laughs> has proven uh, that the radiation doses are... Um... Now, coming back to his second, the other guy, he said that, um, that the, the, the other countries... Okay, he, he questioned my... Sentence. He questioned my. You didn't complete your sentence there. The radiation doses are what? Like I never said okay. there wasn't any radiation, and I'm uh -huh. saying that no country has ever come out saying that it's not possible. Right, right. That's my point. Radiation. Right. So that's my point here. China has a deal with NASA not to blow the whistle on the Apollo missions. So if China were just this? to come out and say, "Oh, the radiation is too dangerous for human beings." That would be blowing the whistle on the Apollo mission. So wait, wait, we wait, have okay. agreed to not hold do up, that. Hold up, hold up. So you, you brought up a thing. You said the Chinese measure the radiation. What yeah. is it? Give us the number. <laughs> I just showed you the article. Now, I, I'm not, Give you us know, the number. I don't want to see an article. Is, I don't care about an article. I want a published paper. Okay, anyway, it doesn't, 
It doesn't. Now, I want to no, answer no, it your question. It does matter question. because if your article gives a number that isn't a lethal radiation, then your own article debunks everything you just said. So the article, how arguments the articles work, there. you have to provide an article and say, this article says the radiation level is this much. And then we can say, is this much lethal or not lethal? Just saying, here is an article, a random article with pictures of space stuff. Oh my God, it agrees with me. I can show you an article of just random pictures and say, I'm right. That tells us okay, nothing. That's we actually show what in the article contradicts what we are saying okay i like i said I, i'm not here to debate that thing i just want you're to in a address debate. one point i'm sorry dr rasa you 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 arrived to a debate saying well i'm not here to debate it's like going right. to a soccer game and saying well i'm not here to play soccer you're literally right. that's what you came here to do <laughs> I came here to tell my story. If you if you if you just okay, want to throw so, it out, I mean, that's we've, no we've, problem we've got to an me. Anecdote. See, the problem there is you're basically saying, hey, well, I've got an anecdote. I've got this thing that I'm saying. OK, great. But that's not evidence. That's not any kind I, of I'm thing not you can trying add. to provide any Art? evidence. All right. So with all that being said, let's uh, let's kick it over to Austin. I haven't heard from you in a little bit. Um, yeah, oh, you had some idea. things in the intro because your so. partner apparently isn't here to debate. Hello? So let's uh, let, let, let's try to bring it into uh, what we were discussing in our intros there. So yeah, so uh, Mark, uh, yeah. you yes. asked why they were they fake disasters? No, the disasters weren't fake. They were still trying to right. get people into orbit, and they were they were still trying to develop space uh, flight technology. And yeah, there's going to be some mistakes. They just okay. They just never actually landed humans on the moon and got them back. And then as for uh, TTM's retro reflectors thing, then what's your explanation for the Soviet and Indian retro reflectors? They just are built better? Newer. Because they don't, they oh. did not need human hands. Newer. Yeah. Like if, there, if there's one that we literally brought there, we don't need to have them automated. And if there's one we didn't. Uh, yeah. The Indian one's newer, but I, yeah. I think the... Yeah. The Russian one isn't. The Russian one is like a year later. Yeah, but it, it's how that retro reflector was built. Like, so it actually had a, a a foot on it, which was manually operated. Like the retro reflector, you can see there's no actual um, um, electronic parts to move that that adjustment leg. Um, I can't remember what it was called. It was called a, a adjustment um, lever or something like that. And it basically, you had to manually work it to get it to point in the right direction. So, so just to clarify, the argument like the, wasn't the blueprint they could it, or like do you have? Yes, we have those. You can actually see it. We can. There's actually pictures of it. Um, but uh, the, the argument wasn't they couldn't do it. They could. They had the capability of doing this. They just didn't because they were brought with with the astronauts. They didn't need to. Waste of money, waste of extra tools. So they just made them physically manual. So yes, they could have made it automatic. They didn't though. We have pictures. We do have the blueprints. They do exist. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, and what's your like explanation for why they keep so much stuff classified? I just no, don't the get government. the point of that. The government like, does is... lots of stupid stuff that's irrelevant. Why does the fact that they do stupid stuff and somehow invalidate the literal physical things that are physically there that we can physically? Oh, because they would with? answer a lot of questions. Like I'd have a lot fewer questions if you know everything was declassified instead of just some of it. That's called an argument from ignorance, saying, "Well, we don't know, therefore it's a conspiracy." It's not it just doesn't we matter. don't know. It's they are withholding information deliberately. Yes, that's that's what that's we don't know. Really Some of the information is is dangerous. Like I would not I would not like NASA to release all sort of rocketry information that they've got because that yes they use it for for sort of space travel, but it also can be very dangerous in the wrong hands. But they're but letting Elon Musk make rockets. I, I, I don't think, think that's true. Dangerous? So so the, there's a list. If you just Google list of random things the government has classified, they have the dumbest things classified you can possibly think of. The classification system isn't some kind of super system to protect us from information. It's a lot of just dumb stuff. They classify I mean, that is originally why the stuff. system was it developed doesn't to protect us from matter. information, right? No. That is no, but like maybe that's not no. how it's used. Again, again, is the this is not a relevant argument. The fact that NASA and the government have dumb stuff classified that doesn't need to be classified doesn't make a difference. It does not invalidate the literal physical objects that we can physically interact with on the moon. Oh, no. Well, and we can or not interact with it. We can. You, we can we look at can. pictures of it. No, no, we can. We can physically us. interact with it. You can send a laser. Reflected off it. That's a physical interaction. Physics. Yeah, um, just like. The but but stop! Stop talking! Stop talking! Stop interrupting me. What I literally just said, 
it doesn't matter what NASA has classified or doesn't have classified. Whether or not they have lots of things classified isn't evidence of a conspiracy. It's no, just not, not by itself. Sure, not by itself. Not by anything. It, it's just the government classifies to... stuff. End of story. No, it's not the end of the story. That because there's is. a lot more to this story than just that. It's also well, that uh, is irrelevant. All right, did you have anything have to add there, Dr. Rosa? To do it. Yeah, I wanted to address one other point because he said something about China doesn't have a secret deal with NASA. Okay, it's not only China. Every country has this same deal with NASA. No, NASA no. is saying, if you just wait until 2025, 2026, then we will admit we fake the Apollo missions and then you can stop lying for us. And every country has that deal with NASA, India, Europe, Japan, even Elon Musk is lying for NASA now, saying the Apollo missions were real because he knows that they're going to admit it. So that's why I don't care. I'm not here to debate. I don't care whether you believe my story or not, because my story will come true as soon as NASA does admit it. So China has a deal with me. It pays me a billion zillion dollars a year to hide the fact that China is lying about literally everything. Like China has has made a deal with me that I will just hide all of the, the falsehoods that Chinese government has made up and the Winnie the Pooh Xi Jinping has just made up. And, and so that thing that they told you, well, they actually told me they were lying about that. So debunked. Yeah. I, anyway, I don't care whether you believe me or not, because you'll see I'm right in the end. OK, we'll see you're right. That That's fine. Like that's you know, that's sort of just anecdotal evidence that that sort of you're, you're going against the weight of everything else. So you're just saying, hey, I've got some sort of insider information. I'm special. Um, you, you've got absolutely no evidence to back up what you're saying is true. Like T-Jump said, you could you could say that the Chinese government is, is paying me a, a squillion dollars to hide the fact that you're a spy. You know, like it, it doesn't mean anything when you come with this kind of kind of statement. And, you know, yeah, you'd say, hey, need... well, wait, we'll wait for them to, to reveal the truth. That's fine. You know, great. We'll wait for them to reveal the truth. But it doesn't it certainly doesn't lend any credibility to you right now. Right. I'm, I'm not I'm not like I said, I'm not trying to debate. I don't need credibility. I don't need evidence. I don't need you is... to believe me. I don't so, need you so that's, to believe that's me. That's the weird thing. So somebody that doesn't want to debate doesn't sign up for a debate. So um, you, you, you're basically saying, hey, I don't want to debate, but I'm going to come into a debate and debate it anyway. And so well, I'm wondering why are you here then? OK, Please. so now I have created a YouTube channel and there's a video called the 12 Smoking Guns. And these yeah. are irrefutable evidences which can be found from the NASA web pages, which proves that it was a hoax. Now, if you want to debate those 12 points, whether it proves that's a hoax or not, you're welcome to try to debunk my evidences that these well, are a hoax. Well, that's the kind of thing we'd expect you to come to for right. the debate with. If you've got indisputable evidences that it was a hoax, mm -hmm. you're saying, hey, but I'm not going to debate them. I'm just well, going uh, to that point. No, no, that well, let, point me finish, can... let me finish. Let me finish. Let uh, me finish. You're not saying, oh, well, I'm not going to bring my indisputable evidences to the debate. I'm going to leave them on a website somewhere where we can't talk about them or know you what they talk. are. Right. This is, so what are they? this is one Wait, of the weirdest us. debates I've ever been in where somebody's saying, hey, I've got indisputable evidence and I want to, you know, go into a debate, but I don't want to debate them and I don't want to bring up the indisputable. I'm going to mention my website it's so right. strange right like i said can if, you tell us if one? i can sh tell yes us one. I, I would be happy to i have a i have a, a word document with the links to all the nasa you use, if you want oh, to look at the I evidence to, i don't i just want you to use your words and tell me okay so let's start with that then um let me let me ask you one question now since you obviously know a lot about the Apollo missions, well, you don't if you don't mind. Questions, just tell us what the first indisputable evidence is. Okay, I'm about to do that. So, okay, as you know, how did they use the bathrooms on the Apollo missions? They pulled their pants down and they peed. In, In the, the command module, right? Sure. Right, because the LEM did not have a bathroom. Okay. Okay. Now, 
the astronauts had to relieve themselves when they were on the surface of the moon. So what did they do? How was the space suit designed? To be able to pee into it. Mm -hmm. Right. So they had a urine tank and they also had a, a kind of a diapers they wore in case the number two came, right? Sure. Now, some of the astronauts also took a medicine to help suppress the urge to defecate. Okay. You've heard about that story? Nope. Didn't really care. Okay. So the astronaut, now why this? Why did the astronauts have to try to stop the urge to defecate on the lunar surface was because they could not take off their gloves. Am I correct? I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Okay. So in the command module, the, there was three can, can people, we skip, right? What is, what is the indisputable proof that it was fake? What, which part of this story, rambling story, okay. is the indisputable proof that it's fake? I'll try to make this quick. In the command module, there was three guys. The guy who remained in the command module helped the last two guys put their gloves on. They got in the lunar module. They went down to the surface. They came back to the command module, and then they could take off their gloves and use the toilet again. Am I right? They could use the toilet with their gloves on. They can poop in the suits. It, okay, mm -hmm. but in the suits, but not out. That's not comfortable. So my point is this. My <laughs> point is this. So, okay. so the, they basically, in the suits, they're basically wearing a nappy, essentially. Right, 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 right. So my point is this. So they went through all these efforts because the third person who remained in the command module had to have his gloves off in order to help the other two guys into their gloves. Now, the question is this. After they all came back to the command module, they opened the door and went outside to retrieve the film canister to bring it back in the command module. Who helped the third guy into his gloves? The other two. Happen. Yeah, so, so you you can still use well you have the gloves on you can help another guy put his gloves on no you can't because yes, that's can. how they had to do it in the lunar module they couldn't take their gloves off it was no, only two they, men you you can still do it when someone else has their gloves on it's just that it takes more time and is less efficient so, uh right okay i believe you good job okay now next let's go another um well, so I just I just debunked your irrefutable proof. I think, I think you, we're done. in your mind you can debunk whatever you want, you know. But um, what? you what? just want so, to worry. So you think you think it's impossible to help put a glove on and turn it? Um, there's no the glove on? there's no way the third per there's the, the guys with two gloves on could not help the third person into his gloves. Yes, now, now right. let's go to the second. Oh, before you whip into your next right. point, there, uh, Doctor, I, I do want to pass it back over to Austin. Uh, I, I feel like we've we've expounded on this one. Uh, let's kick it over to Austin, and we'll uh, then we'll kick it back to you. Okay. So, Austin, do you have any thoughts over there? I haven't heard from you in a little bit. Yeah. So, are you are you the type of uh, non skeptics who think that it'd be impossible to keep a secret? Is that one of that your means. claims? Um, I, I don't know why you say non-skeptics for a start. Oh, where the, where, where I am skeptical. Excuse me, like... Austin, 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 Austin. I was um, it, by, you I was know, I, I am skeptical of things, including I mean, sort of conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Um, there's an overwhelming amount of evidence for this. So a skeptic is somebody who believes something on very little, little or no evidence, and there's an overwhelming amount of evidence. So, um, I kind of. Re wait, resent wait, wait. that you sort of use non-skeptic because I'm not a radical skeptic. All right. Well, let's let's give Austin a few seconds here just to lay out his ideas, and uh, like I said, I'll definitely give you guys a chance to respond. But uh, let's uh, give Austin a chance here. So what I was uh, going to say is, like this guy. Uh, can I show my screen again? Yeah, that's all right. We're not overdoing it tonight. Cool. We're just having a little second there before we get the screen share up. Good chance for you guys to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm going to do the ruthless plugs. All right, go ahead there, buddy. So have you ever heard of this? This guy did a study on the viability of cons conspiratorial, eh, conspiratorial beliefs. So basically what he says is to keep a secret, 
for a hundred years, you need to have fewer than 125 people. Do you think it's possible to uh, create the moon landing footage and create like for the astronauts and the people who fabricated whatever data was necessary to convince the people back at mission control that there was an actual moon landing. Do you think that number could be fewer than 125? How many people do you think it would take? I do not understand the point of any of these questions. I don't know. Uh, well, I, I doubt that it would be possible to fool um, to, to to keep it under 125. If you if you're including all of the engineers working on I'm it, I'm not. See, that's the this... thing. I'm not. What is the point of the question? Uh, so they built all of this stuff to not use it, is what you're saying? No, no. See, that's that's a straw man. It's not okay. Well, my position clear. It, it, I, I can't be strawmanning you when I'm space. Austin. Austin, I can't be strawmanning you when I'm asking a question. I'm asking you: Did they build all of this to not use it? No. Okay. So they they built all of it to as a basically as a cover for uh, ballistic missiles, like intercontinental ballistic missiles. They use a lot of the same technology, a lot of the same, a lot of the technology that NASA developed. You know, we still use today. Like satellite technology, cool. like that's that's useful, and they needed to have cool. this uh, space race narrative to convince the strongly anti-war public in America to dump all our tax money into building rockets. I, I'm sorry, the, the, we're talking about the the 50s and 60s and 70s. The, the strongly anti-war public isn't. Yeah, yeah isn't... late 1960s and early 1970s. That was that was like the Vietnam protest era. Yeah, um, not not when they were designing it though. I I don't I don't understand the point of your your no, sure. your whole thing here. It's kind of just well, um, they 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 have a number of spin-offs from NASA. You're saying that they used it all for war and that none of it was actually for NASA. It, it's very hard to get an engineer to mm. design something if you're lying to them about what they're designing. Uh, not really, because the goal was just to get a rocket into space to get something in low Earth orbit. And once they had that, surprise, surprise, the space program in in Soviet Russia and in America, they just stopped funding it as much. They cut back a lot as soon as they had the ability to do that. Because, you know, this is during the Cold War. They no, didn't care about science wrong. during the Cold War. They didn't that's care about exploration. All right, let's give Tegan a chance to fighting. respond. So... As Mark was saying, if you tell an engineer to design something, they're going to design it with that minimum capabilities. So the lunar stuff was designed to go all the way to the moon, all the way and back, not just to low Earth orbit. It's not like you can just send anything to low Earth orbit and it'll automatically make it all the way to the moon and back. There's a lot of specific things you have to design in order to make it fully capable of getting to the moon and back. So if they didn't know that they were going to the moon and they just only knew that they're going to low Earth orbit, it would have looked very different like, why did they put seats in it if so, it was supposed to be an unmanned thing to lower the... And earth? I'll just add something to that to back up T-Jump. Like, they designed, like, a lunar rover, right? A, a vehicle with wheels to go around on the moon, specifically that functionality. What war functionality did the lunar rover have? So oh, North Orbit is that... the Sky Castle. They're going to go into the may Sky talk. Castle. Definitely. May talk. May, yeah, may talk. So... Let's uh, try to wrap up this one. We'll hand it back over to Dr. Rasa because I think he's got his uh, next point lined up. So, uh, yeah, a couple more minutes there, Austin, and then we'll... Uh, so it wasn't like 100% of the technology developed uh -oh. was for war. Just most of it. And, yeah, most of it is used for war. Not the stuff that was, uh, you know, like the retro reflectors don't really have that much war viability, I think. No, yeah, they it's don't. Just, it's and... just partial. Like, it, it wasn't 100% one way or the other. I don't but, know why I mean, most aren't, of it, in the gray area. Most of it, like, you know, you've got the Saturn V rocket, which gets you into orbit. Okay, that could have some. But, but most of it is stuff like the command capsule, no no war application. The the lander, no, no war application. The the um oh. the the other section, I can't remember what it's called, the the uh, auxiliary section, no real war application. Like all of the, the systems spacesuits? that they're designing. But if you look at all of the R&D time and resources that were... Uh, set aside for that, it's far less than just getting off the planet. What does that sentence mean? Uh, 
I that were doing that like, anyway. for the lunar stuff. Like they used there was less time and resources spent developing that and researching that. But they already they already did that. That that's something that they were going to do regardless. Like whether or not we made it to the moon, they can still design to get us off the planet, and people would have accepted that. Like, there is no reason why you say, okay, well, we're, we've got a space mission. We're getting people into space. We want to launch these satellites. Sputnik comes along. Um, they design their own um, satellite kind of thing. Oh, we've got to get people into orbit. That became a, a priority. Oh, well, now we've got to tell people that we're going to go to the moon so we can convince them to agree to the stuff that we're already doing. Yeah, there were manufacturing consent. You never heard that term before? You know what that means? Uh, yeah, I, I believe Noam Chomsky came up with that that term. Yes, Correct, I yeah. have heard of that before. But you have no evidence to show that it was manufacturing consent. And they already had the consent of the people for space exploration. You're adding one step further of getting to the moon for consent they don't need. All right. All right so it a, wasn't... Uh... Yeah. Okay. I'll give you a chance there. We'll, we'll like, uh, yeah, let's do one minute and then we'll hand it back over to Dr. Rasa. So again, you're, you're thinking like in this black or white way, it wasn't only for that. It, it served multiple purposes, obviously also because, uh, the Soviets had beat us in the space race every step of the way up until that point, it was really good PR to say, oh yeah, we're, we're going to land on the moon. Yeah. That'll, that'll beat. And that'll show those, those damn commies. So, yeah, that was certainly part of it. Sure. And that, that's a valid argument that they wanted to win the space race. Sure. It's just, do you have any evidence that that is what happened instead of them actually reaching the moon as what appears to be the case? So wait, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. They had a lot of motivation to do that. Well, yeah. I mean, there, there's motivation okay. to win a space race. Sure. It's just your your argument that they're you think there that had motivation to be... to lie about well, it. Well, let, let me finish, Austin. You, you're sorry, interrupting sorry. a lot. Let me finish. Um, then you're basically saying, well, their motivation was to be able to research these weapons of war under the guise of a space program. I'm saying that isn't motivation because they already had a space program, whether or not they got to the moon is what I'm saying. Now, whether they want to win the space race by appearing, yes, going to the moon. Yeah, OK, that may be motivation. But, I, you know, it, you could say that, hey, um, um, they, they had motivation for just about anything to, to do anything on that sort of claim. Right. Just because they have motivation to do something doesn't mean they actually did it. All right. We're going to put a bow on that one. Uh, back over to you, uh, Dr. Ross. Uh, you had a, another point lined up there earlier, and uh, I wanted to give Austin a chance to speak. So I think we've had a, a good flesh out there. So uh, back over to you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I, and again, I really appreciate this because I like listening to their answers. You know, it really helps me to learn a lot about uh, the, pe the people who still believe. Now, the second question I have is there is a story from Apollo 12, okay, where, I'm sorry, my mistake, Apollo 13, okay, Apollo 13, the big accident, the near-death experience, and all the drama. Okay, now my question is this, on the way back to Earth, they had to shut down the power systems in order to save energy because the, because the, what, the fuel cell broke down. So, now, question is this, after they shut down and save energy, it said the astronauts claim we started getting really cold in the ship. Okay, what ship is that? No, I'm wrong. If you are in a spaceship, your ship is getting hot. It's not getting cold. Okay, what's the reply? Uh, Space they're is in cold. the command module. Space is cold. They're, they're, they're in the uh, command module, by the way. Right, so command how is module. the command module getting cold when it should be getting hot? Because it's connected to space and heat. Uh, space. space. There's no radiation in space. Uh, only under direct sunlight. Uh, and they're not in direct sunlight. No, they they aren't. They're 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 coming back from the moon. They're in direct sunlight. <laughs> D direct sunlight. Yes. How could they not be in direct sunlight? Hiding in the earth shadow. No. 
The ship would be getting hot. They lied. They made it's it's a it is a script error. They they wrote the wrong script. The astronauts should have said we've been getting hot, not getting cold. No, that's stupid. Because then their spacesuits would like melt. If if it, that was true, right? Be, if they I were suppose, if they were no, really no, coming no, back no, from no, the moon, no, no. just one second. Doc. We have we'll satellites speak. and no, other no. acts and other things in space. If it was the case that just being exposed to direct sunlight meant it was necessarily going to get hotter. Of then, course they're getting hotter. No, that's stupid. That's why the ISS has Stop a cooling talking. system. Stop talking. So, <laughs> yes, the sir. Exposed. The sun does can increase temperature over a long period juicy. of time. Oh, yeah. Like on the way to the zero. moon, right? Stop right. talking. Just one second. From there. zero. Oh, oh. Well, this from <laughs> zero. We're going to try so to let him leave an wrap object up this point in there. space for a long time and it's exposed to the sun, the temperature could rise. If you have a heated box that is heated to be comfortable for humans and you let it sit in space, it'll cool off. Even though the sun can generate heat, it won't generate as much heat as the heater in the thing. So, so it'll get colder. Even if the sun increases the temperature, the temperature will still be going down because the heater's off. Not magic. Wait, wait, you turn off the heater, the temperature go. No, your heat. There wasn't even the ISS has a cooling system, right? What? The ISS has a cooling system. Probably. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything I said? Because the ISS has a cooling system because any object exposed to the sunlight in space is going to heat up. From zero, yes. So if there's a, some, an object that has no heat and it's left in the sunlight, it'll heat up. Yes. Right. That's my point. And if you have a heater and it gets hotter and you turn the heater off, it gets colder. Why so would like, you have a heater if your problem is heating in the first place? You have an air conditioning. You're cooling the ship. I don't understand what you don't understand about just basic temperature. I, I don't understand how you don't understand that space is cold. I, I don't space, like you space know, it may, is cold, it may but the ship gets radiation hot. from the sun. There, but however, it will radiate that heat. It will get cold. And if you're no. not in direct sunlight, which you've already admitted they're not in direct, that the humans themselves are not in direct sunlight, it will get in cold. space. Right? You're not. You're hiding in a so, ship, and you're. All right. I want to see the ISS has, has a heater. The ISS has heaters oh. and cooling. The ISS has a cooling system and heaters and heaters. And, heaters. Heaters. and it has a cooling system because and also on the Apollo and mission heaters. They, the, they heat things up there too. It makes it no, warmer. The, they have a cooling system. It's a kind of an air conditioner to remove the heat. Those aren't mutually exclusive, Bonehead. You can have a cooling system and oh. a heater. Oh, yes. oh what? So the entire systems are at sort of environmental controls, okay? It's not like, well, because they're in sunlight and spaces will heat up. It is, it is just a heater or just a cooling system. It's, it's a whole range of things. Okay, it can be whatever I want it to be. Okay, thanks for the answer. It can be basic what? technology that everyone has in every house. Oh my God! Magic? No, no. Yeah, everybody no, uh, has an air conditioner. China space condition. China. Doesn't your air conditioner uh, heat? I, I I don't understand. Anyway, anyway, I think I'm debating the wrong people. You guys don't know enough about the Apollo missions to you know, or space in general, to know how to answer these questions. I, we just answered them fully, and I think you're just no. Not, you, you don't have no, the brain. The ship capacity would be hot, them. and they lied. No, I just they I just lied. explained you why that's wrong. Stuff. I just explained to you why that's wrong. Let me, let me do it again. So there's an object in space. If it's in direct sunlight, it'll raise to a certain temperature. Uh, they were above that temperature. Oh, they were higher. and then? And then so if it's above the temperature that it would raise to in the sun and you turn the heater uh, off, it'll go down to the temperature uh, that the sun Turn raises. off the heater, the temperature goes down. Yes. You turn correct. off the sun. The sun is the heater. Oh my God. How are you so, how are you this dumb? So the sun. How are you this dumb? What? To, turn off the heater. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. All right. All right. Just one second. The thought. sun <laughs> will raise things to 15 degrees Celsius. The heater okay. raises things to 85 degrees Celsius. So if you turn off the heater, it'll go down to 15 degrees Celsius because that's how hot. Where on the Apollo the missions did they have a heater? Yeah. So, so they, it was three degrees that it went to. Okay. Now three degrees is not the temperature of space you do understand that right yeah you do understand that so if it gets raised to three degrees and they turn off the heater which keeps it at 21 degrees celsius it will lower to three degrees 
which is the heat that is provided by the sun that radiates from the outside of the craft into space and it heats the the the, the capsule or the command module that they're in now if you turn off the heater and it goes to three degrees that is cold for a human but it's hot compared to space yeah i'm sorry but the apollo missions didn't have heaters they had to rotate oh the God. ship oh to keep God. it cool the problem was the ship was getting too hot not too cold no you're an idiot the devices were the heaters the devices when they're on generate heat you moron the computers create a little heat, but they had to rotate the ship in order to, to dissipate the sunlight. No. No. Oh. Right. Yes, because you're an idiot. The combined okay. heat of right. both All things right. <laughs> generates Next too much question. heat. Next question. Austin, go ahead. These guys you're can't debunked. debate. You're debunked. Let's, yeah, let's put sure it on you there, Austin, and uh, we'll, we'll try <laughs> well, to bring it back into uh, another gonna, topic. Kind of put it back over to Mark and P-Jump. Why haven't we been back? What's your theory for this? No, because it's a waste of money. There's no reason. But yeah. wait, if it's a so waste we, of money, why well, are they doing let, it? Let right me now? out. Let me give an answer before you start oh, jumping in. Jump so, down, okay, well, T Dump, do you have anything more to add? What to the question about, about no. why it's a waste of money? Yeah. Um, not really. I mean, the only reason to do it is okay. for clout, political clout, essentially. And so there's not really any reason to go back to the moon. Most astronauts, I mean, like, it's just a big rock. We've been there. We've gotten the stuff. There's nothing more we can really learn by going back at the moon. There's not really a purpose to it. So it's just a giant waste of money. Not going to ask Yeah. That. So um, I'll, I'll finish my answer then. Um, basically, there, there's it's way more sensible if you just want information off the moon to send re rovers, and we have done. And Australia is sending a rover, which for some reason they've called a rover because apparently Australians can't take anything seriously. Um, but basically, we we had no reason apart from getting samples and things like that. Men don't need to do that. We can do that with, with automated things. But now, as you showed in your pictures from when you brought your, your sort of screen shares up they're looking at doing these automated capsules which are rovers with legs and wheels that have some sort of you know pressurized system inside them so we're looking at making a moon base and you showed the base on one of your your screen shares that you did so now we're looking at hey do we have the capability of making a base on the moon for you know sort of transit to other planets i.e mars for instance and so we're looking at going back because before we did not have the capability of doing doing that right it just was too expensive we couldn't do it um now we're looking at whether you know and, and trying to get implemented an actual base there so that's why we're going back now and what didn't before because if we weren't doing anything new what's the point rovers can do exactly the same thing and we don't have to bring them back we don't have to account for all of their you know human needs and and now that we're doing a base though rovers ro <laughs> excuse me rovers can't do that that's impossible yeah yeah i agree with that uh so why weren't they there was still the same incentive still existed like in the 80s and the 90s to build a moon base why sure. why why have we only started like the 2000s well for a start a moon base to where it's only since the 2000s we that we've is. actually put rovers on mars like all of this is being done in sort of these small incremental steps it's like when i in my presentation when i said hey we didn't just shoot astronauts off to the moon first we we did orbit then we did whether we can get to the moon by sending impactors unmanned craft just to impact the moon to make sure we could hit the thing then we did you know these manned missions um after the the impactors to to just orbit see if we can orbit then we we sent one out to see if we could use a lander all of this is incremental so when you're going along trying to make these steps you don't just go okay well we've reached the moon we're just going to now establish a base or do one then it shifted to mars can we send unmanned craft to mars next thing we're looking at is how do we get people to mars and the, the moon may be a, a good way to have the um, uh, momentum and the, the, the capability to launch something with manned humans off to Mars. But we can't just skip that step. We've, we've got to do it one by one by one. 
I'm, I'm confused about the point of the question. Like, wh why why did the U.S. fund a road bill in 2023 and not 2012? What does this have to do with it being a conspiracy? The fact that there are lots of factors in investing into certain political decisions at different time periods isn't an argument for a conspiracy. This is like the dumbest uh, line of questioning imagined. So the equivalent, like, to your road bill yes. uh, scenario, it'd be like saying, why... Like, if we have the capability to build roads, why haven't we built any roads in 50 years? Yes, that's exactly what happens, like, all over the country. Like, the, the government is no, they, stupid they, and inefficient they, they, and makes bad decisions. They do build roads, like, constantly. Like, it never... No, 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 no. There, there are lots of places... Live, but, oh like, it's constantly happening all the time. So there are lots of places all around the country that have decaying infrastructure. One of the biggest topics in, in the country sucks. is our decaying Not infrastructure. everywhere, though. But Why everywhere didn't... stop, we stop, talking. stop talking? Stop talking. Stop talking. I don't know what you're incapable of understanding the point here. So the point here is that there are things we could do now, but we're not doing them for lots of reasons. Lots of political reasons, personal motivation reasons, money reasons, all kinds of stupid reasons that are irrelevant. There are lots of things we could do to make the world better, but we're not doing them. Is that evidence yeah. of a conspiracy? No. No, it's not. It's not necessarily. You have to take it as a whole, though, with all there the is other no stuff. whole. That is, there is zero right, one, evidence there. One second, there, none. He was zero. Responding. Don't there. interrupt me, right, James? No, no. James? James Coons? Who are you? Clearly, James. Don't I, interrupt me. I'm don't clearly James. Oh, come yes. on, you gotta listen to the moderator. Come on, the <laughs> moderator's got a job come to on, do. Man. All right, we're gonna let Austin respond for a second here, guys. Um, can we just start over? Can you like list the evidence that you have that we have been to the moon? What is there? Well, uh, hold it, hold it, hold it. So, so the question was, and I, I, I just like that you're getting away from the question sort of thing that you're sort of going, well, well, it's not, not, you know. I mean, I, I, uh, so, so your question was, why didn't we go back? And and it wasn't like NASA was doing nothing during the '90s and '80s and things like that. That's true. The focus shifted to Mars. So, I, and and T Jump's point is correct. If you if you have like a focus on say this area that you want to focus on from the government, and then you shift to another area, or you don't you don't go back to that area because you've already done work on it, that may be a sign of governmental incompetence. But it certainly isn't a conspiracy that you're trying to you know you, you've faked doing things in that area and you've moved to another one. So you're saying it's a sign of competent government. No, we they're totally to incompetent. I agree. U.S. government is incompetent. Hundred percent agree. Not evidence of a conspiracy. Oh, you got some thoughts over there, Doctor Rasa? Um, <clears throat> actually, I, I wanted to um, kind of make some closing statements. I have a a, a video. It's called 12 Smoking Guns." And if you want, you know, I would be happy to come back sometime and we can discuss all these other 12 evidences of a hoax. Well, but, um, I mean, we heard one of the smoking guns and it wasn't exactly smoking. So, I mean, usually that, the, are done those, at the end, but... I think those two, two things I just mentioned two. are not part of that. Okay. okay. I there's would 12, ask... Us, there's more than 12, but anyway... If you do I'm have just saying, uh, an example you want to pull there, Doctor, uh, we did have a couple more minutes of discussion technically on the clock, but if you guys wanted to move into Q&A, that's fine as well. Oh, I had another point to bring up too. Um, the radio transmissions from the from the landers and things were picked up by Australia and the Soviet Union, and that wouldn't be possible from low Earth orbit, so they had to be farther out. Any thoughts over there? Yeah, it could be unmanned. So, do do you mind if I if I kind of, I have to kind of go a little soon? Do you mind if I make my closing statement? Oh, um, I yeah. If, if you if you want to take one minute to make a closing statement, yeah, it's always it's nice if we can get through uh, some of the audience questions because there are a few questions that will probably be yeah. uh, pointed towards some of the things that you've said. Uh, so if you have mm -hmm. to get through those quickly, uh, I'm gonna stop yeah. talking and I'll give you uh, I'll give you one minute there. Okay. Okay, so there, thank you. There are four kinds of people who work for space agencies. There's the people who know it was a hoax and are not talking. There are the people who are know it was a hoax and they're lying about it. And then there's the people like me who know it was a hoax and are talking about it. And now there's the fourth group are the people who simply still believe it was real. 
Okay, so I I know I am a whistleblower. I know it was a hoax. I'm actually risking my job and my career to come here and to admit what I'm admitting to you guys. Now, just to throw in the last thing, we have a, a moon landing. We have a moon landing hoax Facebook group, and there's 42,000 members and zero flat earthers. We've been kicking out flat earthers ever since 2015 when they first appeared. And and I don't have anything against flat earthers. I don't have anything against people who believe Five the moon seconds. landings were real. I find they both um, are. There's a lot of similarities between flat earthers and people who believe the moon landings are real because neither one of them will examine the evidence. You know, I, I presented the. Right. Uh, we're past time. Uh, we're past a minute. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I we'll cut you off there just for the sake of time. Uh, once uh, T Jump gets back, we'll go right into our Q and A. Uh, I usually like to save closings till the end. I don't know if anybody else prefers to do their closing now, just because uh, we do get sometimes into new topics when we get discussing these questions that come in from the audience. Uh, and on that note, uh, get your questions in the Q&A, guys, because we are going to go through them uh, and answer as many of them as we can. Also, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, and on top of that, I did pin the uh, email for Modern Day Debate. So if you're interested in having these discussions, whether you want to talk about the flat earth, the globe, if you want to be talking about creationism, evolution, we want to hear from you. So uh, that email is pinned in the chat right now. It's moderndaydebate at gmail.com. So uh, check us out and uh, send an email there because we'd love to uh, love to see some new faces on Modern Day Debate. It's always fun. Um, also, I will say, since T-Jump's not back yet, if you're like, oh, I'm scared, I can't go on camera, I'm squeamish, uh, you know, that's just, uh, I'm not ready. We actually have a Discord, and it's pretty rad, and you can pop in there if you've got a, a you know, uh, something gets your goat. There's all kinds of uh, debate channels that are related to the subjects that we debate on Modern Day Debate, and you can exercise your chops there, get some, you know, confidence and maybe a, a lower stress environment, and then maybe uh, we might see you on the show. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun. So uh, once again, modern day debate at gmail.com is tagged there. Well, let's see if we got any questions for Austin and Dr. Rasa while we wait for T Jump to come back from wherever T Jump has gone. All right, well, let's see. Do, do, do. Ozean Doc says the radiation dosage is about 200 times the rate on the moon as it is on the surface of the Earth, or 5 to 10 times that of a transatlantic flight. Dr. Roz, what is Newton's law of gravitational formula? <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let me let me come to the question about this radiation dosage. Okay, now it all depends on what kind of sensors you're using. Now, the thing is, there's different kinds of radiation, and some of them have higher speeds and higher force because they're larger particles okay so the sensors that we've been sending up are not the ideal kind of sensors to really know what's going on so the thing is when you're out in space it's a random thing any kind of particles can come from any any direction the sensors really can only give you a clue as to what's up there so that's why nasa is so heavily invested in cancer treatment therapies because they know that when the astronauts come back they will be having cancer that the radiation shielding using now is pretty good but it's not quite good enough so that's why when those artemis 2 astronauts come back with cancer then cancer the cancer research treatments centers that nasa has been invested in will help them Okay, so uh, the cancer research centers are there for the people that have cancer in the US, not for any astronauts specifically. Um, the uh, Apollo missions, the astronauts did get a dose of radiation. It was lower than the um, standard recommended dose for people that work with radiation. So yes, they did get a do dose of radiation. It was not a fatal dose. It was not a dangerous dose. Um, if they continued to do so for an extended period of time, it would certainly be a problem like anybody that works with radiation, like a x-ray machine operator or anything like that. But 
you know, for, for, for the travel, they chose a path that was in a very, very narrow band of the, the Van Allen and they had radiation shielding to mitigate the dose and they were traveling really fast like they went through it very very fast so yeah i've heard i've heard all these stories too it's what you call the fox which guards the hen house of course nasa is going to tell you oh they got little radiation yeah that's what the fox says there's no hens missing from the hen house <laughs> or it's true and you're just crazy A conspiracy oh yeah it could be that could be maybe okay. you might want to consider it all right before we just uh go right down that path uh let's see lj hey you're back again uh you're on for the right topic yeah our uh our uh, live chat uh what would you call him token flat earth commenter on every debate so we're happy you're here it's 2024 why don't we have a camera on the moon We've had we have had cameras on the moon. They literally took pictures. You mean why don't we put like a twenty four seven camera on the moon? I mean we could. Oh, and just just for the record, I just in that last question, you didn't actually answer what Newton's gravitational formula was. <laughs> anyway, you know, I mean, this is let's. <laughs> You know, you, I, like I said, I don't care whether people question my credentials. I could just be making this up. I don't care whether you believe me or not. You'll see I'm right, you know. Do you know any okay. equations? You said you were a quantum physicist. Do you know any equations? Um, Laplace's equations. I, I guess I, I'm, equations. Not, I'm, not, I'm not here to make you happy and to make you try to believe me. This is not, I don't care whether you believe me or not, you know. You don't. I'm sorry. You're a physicist that doesn't know Newton's. I'm not saying that. I'm a physicist who doesn't care whether you believe me or okay. not. Okay, just interesting. Oh, uh, right. Sorry, could you repeat that question, Ryan? I do apologize. Uh, so this is from LJ. Uh, he usually comes in with classics letting us know what his dog knows. Yeah. What does your dog know, LJ? Uh, let us know. Uh, it's 2024. Why don't we have a camera on the moon? Yeah, the, the, I mean, the, the uh, Indian and Chinese famously took pictures uh, I, I, yeah, as T Jump said, like a webcam, um, is is that what what you're expecting? I, I, like the the Chinese um rover famously it took a picture of the the lander and the lander took a picture of the rover kind of thing. So I don't know what more you kind of want. There's not a lot to take pictures of up there, by the way. It's not like you're going to see, you know, um, massive sites and things. They're taking pictures though. All right, well, let's carry on there. Uh, free free Palestine, five dollars. Thank you. Uh, from uh, it says it's 2024. We should have hotels on the moon, honeymoons on the moon, and peaceful moonless nights. Earth is seriously flat. Happy New Year. Well, happy New Year to you, free free Palestine. Any thoughts on that? Uh, T jump or Mark? I think it costs a million dollars to get like what a pound out of the atmosphere per pound, and you, you want to put a hotel like who's gonna go there? Elon Musk, maybe. Jeffrey Bezos. Maybe. Anyways, let's carry on. LJ says, hey, sheep, how was the U.S. flag blowing on the moon? It wasn't. It was just the, basically, it had a wire up the top that kept it up because otherwise it would have just slowly fallen down. And the, the blowing that you think you're seeing, that isn't, that isn't wind. That's just a, you know, when they're putting it in when there's there's sort of forces working on it it's being held up by the wire but it's not still momentum yeah momentum yeah essentially um yeah if the thing is the thing that gets me is if it was if it was all a, a stage kind of thing and and filmed in a stage sound stage that that was all fake there wouldn't be an end of wind either so i don't understand why this question even exists quite frankly Alrighty. Well, we can move on. Uh, unless you had any thoughts over there, Austin or uh, Dr. Raza? Yeah, I can, I can comment on this because one of the things I try to do is to help educate people who provide false evidences that it was a hoax. You know, like some people say, oh, there's no stars in the picture, so that proves it's a hoax. No, that's a false evidence to put forward. And so is this a flag waving thing. Now, the thing is, regarding the flag waving, there's one movie called American Moon, and they did a good job of covering this subject. So when the astronaut's hand is on the pole, then you would expect the flag to be waving, 
right? But then there's other videos where the astronaut walks past the flag and the flag moves even though the astronaut never touches it. Now, the official NASA excuse there would be a static electric effect. But then there's another scene where there's no astronauts anywhere in the picture and the flag still moves. And that one is still a little bit questionable. It could have been a breeze blowing through the studio. All right, let's carry on there, guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's scroll on up. Robin Webster uh, for membership chat says, Mark Reed is the goat. So you got a fan of oh, that, Mark? Thank you, Robin. Uh, Ozean Talk says, uh, we read that one. Uh, Rudolph says, for the doctor, what is the conjugate of A plus by B-I? Okay, anyway, you know, I'm not, I'm not interested in people who, who question my story like i said i'm not for me it doesn't matter whether you believe me or not i'm not here to 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 play that game you know you just all i'm doing is i'm putting a seed in your mind and then in the future you'll see i'm right all righty let's see what else we got here keep the super chats coming in everybody uh, we appreciate the chats uh, and they keep the conversation uh, moving along uh, if there's something that we didn't get a chance to talk about during the debate uh, get it in there because uh, we've only got a few more left and then we're going to wrap it up so robin webster says the audience did not show up to hear your story um they feel like you uh, have lost just on that premise alone uh well I, if you want to take a moment to uh, respond to that, and then we'll carry on. Is Robin, Robin's kind of calling you out? So, do you have anything to say? Calling who out? Uh, they're saying that the audience did not show up to hear your story with no evidence. Uh, they feel like it was disrespectful, and they're saying you lose. Did you have anything to say to Robin, or do you want to just carry on? I, I don't. Under, it, I it's don't fine. understand. Let's just carry on, guys. Well, it's a little I, I, too. Well, I'll back up. I'll back up, Doctor Rasser, in a certain way, and I, I want to be charitable here. That that I don't think. I don't think debates. I don't like the application of win lose to debates. I think it's important to have that that sort of discussion and opposition of ideas. But um, it it is bewildering the way that you've sort of come to a debate and said, "Well, I'm not here to debate." It, it's kind of it, it's really unusual. Um, but it's sort of it's sort of saying, hey, I don't have anything to present in a way that my idea um, is is superior or, or is is um, better than yours, but I'm going to come to argue it to a place to argue it anyway. It just it just seems like you've got nothing nothing to present. Right. Well, let me let me respond, please. The sure. I, I, I have a, a, a Facebook group with 42,000 members and I kick out any sign of a flat earther, but I allow people who believe the moon landings are real because I can learn from them. I'm learning from you guys. I like to hear your answers to these questions. And I have many, many, many more. You know, I have this 12 smoking gun list, you know, and um, I, I'm not, you know, I just like to hear your answer. It's just a learning experience for me. All right. Sounds like a win for everybody then. Uh, let's carry on. Jimbo Khan says, Astronauts on wires, paperclip, Von Braun, Parsons, why do they fake ISS shoots? Is space a vacuum or not? That's T jump. They don't. It's not fakes. You're crazy. Or you, Mark? <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not on wires. That's absolutely ludicrous and and sort of we've had this this conversation about artifacting on things so uh it's just it it's just this whole idea this conspiracy theory stuff people love to get into it they love to see any kind of well i've got secret knowledge that you don't have makes me feel good about myself i think you could probably find some papers on why conspiracy theories exist and if we're wrong we're wrong i mean if they provide solid evidence and and sort of admit that they faked it sure i'll be the first to admit that i was wrong but until then, we have to look at things logically and and go with the best evidence that we have. It's not good to just believe a conspiracy because you want that conspiracy to be true. That's not good enough. All right. Well, let's try to carry on here. We got a couple more Super Chats coming in. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for your Super Chats. And uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to keep asking questions. Robin Webster says that the temperature was 38 degrees Fahrenheit 
in the command module. Well, three degrees Celsius, yes, correct. Oh, us Canadians and Australians, blasphemy. Uh, any thoughts on that, or do you guys just want to carry on? It's more of like a statement. Yeah, all right. Nobody's kind of biting. Sorry, Robin. Uh, Jimbo Khan. Uh, no, I'll, I'll say something. I, I think she's, <laughs> right. she's absolutely right. Absolutely right. And and you know, I'm I'm not sure. And and you know, they they had um had to to keep warm in in blankets, and they're incredibly cold, kind of thing. So. Um, I, I, I just dislike this whole idea that these people going through such discomfort and such um, sort of, you know, it's not it's not comfortable the way that they traveled. It's not like they went in a luxury liner or something. And the idea that, hey, they're all just lying is just it's kind of just really insulting. All right. Well, let's go on. Jimbo Khan asks, uh, waste of dollars, mineral mining. China can though, right? Oh, can I reply? Uh, sure. <laughs> I, I think that's kind of uh, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, I mean, so we are designing ships now in China. We have put the priority of mining minerals from the moon over sending a man to the moon. Sending a man to the moon is really not a practical thing because of the the radiation problem. Maybe he can step out, grab a snaffy, grab a selfie and come back. That's not a practice. It's just a waste of money. But mining the moon is a value because the moon is covered with rare materials and it's actually less environmentally damaging to actually get them from the moon than it is to try to dig them up from here on Earth. Any thoughts on the other side? Yeah, that's that's definitely one practical application. Um, also, if we're going to use the moon as a staging point, um, the moon's gravity is so much lower than than Earth's, it, it would make a very good staging point. So if there there is that reason um, that if we want to make a staging point, I don't think um, automation can do what is necessary to make it so. All right. Last one right now coming in uh, before we go into our closing statements. So thank you, everybody, for your super chats. Uh, if you don't get the uh, uh, super chat in before we finish this one up, we're going to go to closing statements. LJ says, as another one comes in, uh, LJ says, Doctor, provide your number one proof. We are on a globe. <laughs> okay, that's no problem. Um, first of all, if you if you look at a ship going out over the ocean, you can see it's slowly getting down. The bottom, the water rises up as the ship goes down. I mean, you can see that anybody who has a proper camera. Now, what the flat earthers try to do is they they zoom in, and they zoom out. They say, oh, this is just a zoom effect. But if you just zoom in on the ship and you just watch it go down over the over the horizon, you know, it's not it's it's not going away as it would do on a flat earth well, i'm All glad right. we agree on that Dr. Right, before Russell. we glad get, we agree on something yeah before we get too sidetracked right uh so savage top attends says which university did dr raza get his doctorate slash phd it's kind of personal yeah. you don't have to answer that i don't mind that. answering um i have i have um I went to four different universities and the fourth different the fourth university was where I got my doctorate. My doctorate is actually in natural medicine. Okay. So it's called Clayton College University. Alrighty. And uh, yeah, Matters Now had put in a membership chat there. Uh, we are going to be doing an after show on Matters Now. So uh, We'll put the link for that in the description. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you all there. I'll also give you guys the uh, StreamYard link so uh, you can join us if you'd like. So Nominal, uh, last chat here, says, Soon we'll go to deep space and mine dark matter. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Ozean Talks, uh, coming in with one membership, and then we'll go into the... Uh, into our closings it says Mark's style is lovely. It outshines his debate. So membership chat, just a fan chat. That's always nice to see. Oh, Good thank you, Ozzy. It outshines my head as well. That's, that's, yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So, uh, T. Jump, we'll start with you. One minute on the clock. Closing statements on the discussion, and where can everybody find you? Potato. Uh, Potato. YouTube.com slash T. Jump. Any thoughts uh, on the closing of the debate? Nope. Nope. All righty. Over to you, Mark. One minute on the clock. Your closing thoughts. Yeah, so um, I, I talk a lot about conspiracy theory and what makes people believe them. And it's not like every conspiracy theory is false, sure. But we can't just assume that conspiracy theories are right on nothing but sort of anecdotal evidence and nothing on people say so, because there's all kinds of people saying this is a conspiracy and that's a conspiracy. And we, we don't know who to believe. So the rational way is to go with what the evidence says and try and uncover more evidence. And unfortunately, today, we didn't have any evidence whatsoever. Um, there's a lot, a whole load of what ifs and a whole load of, well, they had motivations and a whole load of, well, I, I see this myself. No real actual concrete evidence that any of this was faked and a lot of evidence to say that it was not. The retro reflectors, the the um, um, photographs, the, all of the evidence says that this was actually done and they explained how to do it. And we didn't get any explanations why they couldn't. Um, just a whole load of hyperbole. Um, so... Um, yeah, I, I still believe that we went to the moon. I think it was a, a, a tremendous feat. I, I haven't been given today any reason why we could not make it to the moon other than misunderstandings about how cold space is and misunderstandings about how radiation works. All right. Uh, Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, T-Jump and uh, Mark Reed, for being here in your closing statements. Um, Dr. Uh, Raza, would you like to go first? One minute. Actually, uh, could, could, could Austin go first? Oh sure. sure. I, I didn't know if you uh, were still in a hurry. So Austin, uh, one minute on the cl on the floor. So Mark just said we were supposed to provide concrete evidence that the moon landing didn't happen, and that's we don't have the burden of proof. Um, so there is some circumstantial evidence that didn't happen, and but we really have to look at the empirical evidence that the uh, moon landing non-skeptics provide, and what is it like moon rocks? without a fusion crust. They find those in Antarctica all the time. Uh, there's the footage, which, I mean, I don't know, looks like pretty easy to pick to me with wires on a black background or just, you know, in a microgravity plane. If better evidence is pre presented next year, then I'll be the first to admit I was mistaken. And when they don't, please just consider that maybe you're wrong about this one. All righty. Uh, over to you, Dr. Raza. One minute on the floor. All right. I want to try to explain to you how NASA pulled off this hoax. The way they did it was they sent the astronauts to low Earth orbit, and then they had beamed down the pre-recorded video clips of them hopping around inside of stage studio. Now, NASA was able to send unmanned craft to the moon. NASA was able to place down retroflectors using those unmanned crafts. NASA was able to scoop up rocks and bring those rocks back to Earth using unmanned crafts. So that's how they did it. They sent unmanned crafts, brought the rocks back. They sent down pre-recorded video clips of them hopping around inside a studio. And then they presented the rocks to the public as these are real rocks brought back by human hands. All right. We're going to close it out there, guys. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in for our first debate of 2024. Uh, we're glad that you all made it. We're glad we're here, too. So uh, if you had fun, hit the like button. Share this out in the spaces you'd like to have these debates. And once again, we want to hear from you. If you enjoy having these discussions, uh, email us at moderndaydebate at gmail.com uh, and let us know what's got your goat, and uh, we'll see about getting you on. Uh, and once again, if you're not confident and that's not your jam, you don't want to be on camera right yet uh, you know you're squeamish uh, you can always check out our modern day debate discord uh, where you can uh, join one of our chat rooms and uh, exercise your chops and maybe a little less stress environment but let's be honest we always have fun here too so uh, we'll close it out everybody and uh, we'll see you on the after show uh, cheers for now <laughs>